Easy, easy. Yeah, he's lame. Somebody's running him into the ground. Man must have been in a hurry. Maybe we better try to find out why. I'd find somebody. Handcuffs. I'm not trying to hide them. I'm looking for help. What kind of help? It's not for me. It's for the fellow who put these on me. He's back there about three miles hurt. Why would you stay with him? Because he had a gun in his hand. I figured he was about to kill me. Now, who's this who's about to kill you? Morehouse, Sheriff Clyde Morehouse. I didn't say he was about to kill me. I said I figured he was. If I could have been wrong. But if I stayed there, I could have been dead, too. Yes, sir, now, I, I was his prisoner. But he put these cuffs on the wrong man. Crossed my heart and hoped to die. <laughs> it's a fine resolution. I reckon he figured I was trying to escape. Joe, why don't you ride back and have a look? You sure tell him Hank sent you. I'd call that one for the history books. A prisoner sending help to a sheriff that's been on the hanging him. safe, have you? You bet we do. What stepped in the gopher hole? Broke his leg. Throwed me something fierce. Before I knew what had happened, why well, he'd have hightailed it. Hey, what'd this fellow do? Well, he and a couple of his friends was helping themselves to bank money. Last month, when they held up a stage, killed a driver, robbed all the passengers, and took off. Yes, sir. You caught yourself a real sweetheart. That sounds like it. Let's get you back to camp. Think you can ride? I reckon so. All right, I'll give you a hand. Oh. Right, take it slow. Oh. I'm saying, what are you going to part this with today? Ah, much holy thing. Oh, much holy thing. Oh, much holy thing. Oh, much holy Here he is. He's pretty stove up. Watch his leg. Yeah. Easy does it. There we go. Yeah, sure. Howdy. And I looked at the stars in the sky. I wondered if ever a cowboy would drift to that sweet by and by. You try taking off like that again, I'm gonna put a bullet in you. I was just going for help. It's like I told these folks. Yeah. And guess what you told them folks? Then I stopped you, you'd be fetched up somewhere in Mexico. Who'd I thank here? Ben Cartwright, Sheriff. My son Hoss over here. Howdy, Sheriff. Much obliged to your son there, Mr. Cartwright. But I got another favor to ask of you. Sheriff, you look as if you could use a doctor. You sure do, Clyde. Mr. Cartwright, if you just strap me up real tight, well, I'll be on my way with him, but 
I won't have to ask you for the loan of a horse and saddle. Of course, of course. Have much of a case against him? Well, I have all witness. Passengers he robbed. When they see me, they're gonna tell you. Too bad you got the wrong Hank Simmons. Well, if that, if that happens, I'll let you go. Till then, I'm not letting you out of my sight. Huh. Oh. Yeah, I think I could use that strapping up right now. Get the bandage box up, Simmons. They say there will be a great judgment. And cowboys like doggies will send. Now, let breath out, please. <sighs> oh, easy. I won't be able to breathe at all. Exactly what bandage is for. So you not breathe too hard and hurt the rib. When you get to Cottonwood, you see the doctor. And you tell Dr. Hop Singh is do good job. Thank you. All I can say is I'm pouring out of wind. Good. Oh. Bandage is success. Oh. It'd be a whole lot easier if you were to stay on here, Sheriff. We can take care of Simmons. I'll feel a whole lot easier when I get him behind bars. If I can get him there. Sheriff, how you feeling? <laughs> well, I tell you, I've been talking awful sassy, but I got to admit, I, I don't feel sassy. I've been thinking, wonder if one of you folks would ride along with me. Well, I suppose I could. Yes, of course. Could. I figure two days going, one day coming back. You'll get deputy pay. No need for that. I'll saddle my horse. You'll get it. Are you really that scared of me, Clyde? Well, I'm careful of loaded guns and rattlesnakes. If you give me any more lip, I'm going to tie you to that saddle. I'll tell you, it's a sad business when people don't trust each other. I need to see what you do to a real wicked man. Mr. Cartwright, I want to thank you once again for all your kindness. I am unwelcome. Everything you've done for me. Hey, I... oh. All right, let's ride. And I want to thank the two, Mr. Cartwright, for your hospitality. The accommodations weren't too good, but the chow board made up for it. Oh, good lost in the great final sale. All that might have walked in. Roll on, long little doggies. Roll on, roll on. This is real pretty country. What's been mine in California? You ever been to California, Joe? Yep. Joe, I got to warn you. This fella here could talk the stinger right out of a bee. <laughs> He'll be poking and prying, trying to find your weak spots. He'll try to trick you, catch you off guard, jump you when he does. He's just suspicious, Clyde. Now, I'm going to settle down there. If I put some money together. I'm Stockton Way, raised blooded cattle. Yeah, I've been reading up on it. I'm going to be a cowhand all my life. Assuming you have a life. <laughs> Assuming. That's a good word. Do you do much reading, Joe? Yeah, fair amount. Yeah, same with me. I like learning things. Never had any real schooling. Kicks around too much for it. But you may have noticed I taught myself reading and writing. And how to speak proper. <laughs> proper, properly. Taught myself a lot of things. Yeah, such as wool pulling. I found I'm smarter than most people. <laughs> roll on, roll on, roll on, little doggy. Roll on, roll on, roll on. Roll on. You know something? I grew up in these hills, that's a fact. Lived with a Mexican family about 10 miles east of here. They didn't have much, but they treated me like one of their own. I never had any family that I can remember. Well, I... What's a woman? I called her Aunt B. I remember her. Must have been about five, maybe six. Kept running away from her. She was mean. And there was another family that took me in. School teacher boarded with him. She started me reading. 
I didn't stay with him either. Don't remember why. Yes, sir. Sheriff, you're taking me right back into home country. I got a lot of friends around here. Why don't you help him, Joe? I don't need help. Well, you look about done in. I'll bet them ribs are burning like fire, aren't they? You know, you want to be careful, Sheriff. You could puncture a lung. I had a friend once who did that. Drowned in his own blood. Yeah, hey, come on, knock it off. Well, doesn't it bother you to see a man suffering like that? It hurts me. Just look at him. And for what? We can look like a fool at the end. You aiming to rile me, you have. You shut your mouth or I'll shut it for you permanent. Just remember, I don't have to take you back alive. Take the first watch, will you, Joe? Yeah. I would take it, but I got to ease this pain a bit. Take Wendy here over there to that tree. Cuff him around it. Pain making him fretful. You got to understand that, Joe. Okay, that's far enough. I guess he's worried too, not knowing which Simmons I am. On the ground, put your hands around the tree. Oh, especially since we're so close to home country. Must be thinking about the Mexican family, all them friends I have around here. I wouldn't be surprised if they're watching us right now, figuring on doing something. Oh yeah, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just fool him. If he does that again, knock him out. <laughs> Can't you fellas take a joke? I feel sorry for you. I truly do. You're more prisoners around here than I am. I've got nothing to worry about. I just go to sleep. But you gotta stay awake. Got to jump every time I move. And every time you hear something out there in the night. And tomorrow it'll be worse. <laughs> I'm afraid I will be a stray cowboy, a maverick unbranded on high, and get in the trouble at dawning when the boss of the riders goes by. Roll on, roll on, roll on, little doggy, roll on, roll on. <laughs>
Pedro? Maria? What's happened here? Where's your papa? Where's, where's Pepe? My father is dead. Pepe, go. Maria. Maria! How long has she been like this? Two, three days. I think she might die. You got any food? Not for a long time. I tried, but I am sick. I don't mean that. You got any food in the house? See. Si. Please, you help? some water. Get my sister some water. This morning, your sister. Yes, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Bet you that makes you feel a lot better, doesn't it? You don't remember me, do you? You weren't no bigger than a chicken the last time I was here. Your papa had uh, some horses and a couple of cows, and they gone. You know, I used to live here when I was your age. That's a fact. When did your papa die? Last week. Same sickness as you and your sister? Uh, that's a shame. I was counting on him for something. Yeah. Listen, you know what you need? You need some food in you. But you get some food in you, you're gonna feel all right. And I'm gonna fix you some. Now I want you to pay close attention. I made arrangements to meet somebody here. See, I'm a sheriff. And he's one of my deputies. And we're after this real bad man. You understand? Entiendes? I planned I'd signal him when I got here. And after I fix you that grub, I'm gonna build a fire, a big smoky one. And I want you to promise me to keep it going after I leave. Night and day till he gets here. You think you could do that? I don't know. Why, well, sure you can. You're a big boy, Pedro. His name's Yancey, Tommy Yancey. You remember him? He's been around here. See, si. I know him. You tell him that Hank will see him in Mexicali. Think you can remember that? You help Maria. Well, I, I can't do anything for her right now. But I'll send somebody from town. I promise. All right? That's my boy. Now let's get you that grub.
There you go, buddy. Uh, think you can feed yourself? I'm gonna cut some brush for that fire. Now, you need anything, you just yell. Gracias. De nada. Didn't get you, huh? Drop it. <laughs> Pedro, kill him! Now you get up. Walk towards that cabin. Still can't take a joke. <laughs> Pedro Maria! Cuidado. El bandido que busca. A little jumpy, aren't you? Why don't you go ahead and shoot him? You might just as well. He's half dead of the fever and his sister ain't no better. They ain't eaten for three or four days. Well, what are we waiting for? Why don't you take me on into Cottonwood, deputy? Because it's the truth, or because he wants you to say so. Look, I'm just trying to help you, that's all. Don't believe him, Pedro. He's lying. He don't want to help you. Nearest neighbor's a good day's ride off. There's a doctor in Cottonwood now. But you wouldn't get there before tomorrow. It'd be a good day bringing him back here. The girl could be dead by then, boy, along with her. What I was planning to do, I was going to kill one of them chickens out there and pick some greens and fix up a good soup and hand feed her the broth. What's the matter, Joe? Don't you believe me? I believe what I say. You think I'm lying about what I was planning to do? Or maybe I'm lying about the nearest neighbor. I told you I had a lot of friends around here. One of the others got to be lying and reading your mind. <laughs> sure I am. You're wondering why I want you to stay here. Whether I'm putting off a showdown in Cottonwood or because I expect my friends to come and get me. Right? Oh, you know, there's one way I can make sure you don't get away. <laughs> Not you. You wouldn't shoot a man down in cold blood. Now, you're all tied up with what's right and wrong. Now, don't you push me too far. Hey, you see, you got them principles, Joe. And they won't let you do things. That's the difference between you and me. I've got none. I can just do anything I want to. I don't care who gets hurt. I know that. I'll tell you something you don't know. I got ways of making people do what I want. Signaling for help? <laughs> I told you, you're signaling my friends for me. I made you do that. What's the matter, Hank? Not too sure on my principles right now. Que pasa? Que pasa? 
Vanessa. That's all right, Pedro. Yeah, he's just having a little fun shooting at me. He's lying to you. I was just signaling for help. Go on back to bed. Everything's all right. You do what he tells you, Pedro. He'll shoot you if you don't. If you don't try to outsmart me, Joe. You know, I'm sick of listening to your big mouth. Now sing me your favorite song. Sister's better, her fever's down. She wakes up, she's probably gonna want some of that soup. Yeah, that's right, I'm not too bad to cook. ¿Qué quieres? ¿La mordaza? Tells you. We don't want him to hit you again. Pedrito, estás bien? Got yourself another enemy, Joe. signal fire going. Make it real easy for my friends to find me. Boy, hates you. Maria saw what you did to him. She hates you, too. They're going to set me free. Or my friends will. Maria and me used to be sweethearts. You didn't know that, did you? She'll do anything I want. Won't you, Maria? Three enemies in here. Gotta sleep sometime, too, Joe. Little tired? Yeah, I'm tired. If you try anything, I'm gonna shoot you. I'm not gonna kill you, just shoot you in your leg and break it. I do believe you mean that. I do. Well, see what you're doing to yourself, Joe? None of this would have happened if you 
stayed with that roundup, minded your own business. That's the meddling. That's what comes of it. Destroys a man's character. I'll live with it. Well, you go ahead and get some sleep, because I ain't going to do nothing. I don't have to. They're going to do it for me. Roll on, roll on, roll on, little doggies, roll on, roll on. Dice que es un oficial. Me mostró a mí su insignia. Dice que el otro es un bandido. I don't want you speaking Spanish. I don't know what you're saying. It makes me think you're planning something I won't like. You speak English. Cuidado, I told you not to speak Spanish. You speak English. I just want you to know that you have no reason to be afraid of me. Thanks, my prisoner, I'm acting as a sheriff's deputy. Do you understand that? Thanks, wanted for robbery and murder. We were taking him back to Cottonwood to stand trial. He killed the sheriff and he got away. I followed him here. He says he's got a friend who's going to meet him here. I don't know if he's telling the truth or not. You two are sick and I couldn't leave you. he hit you? Because I helped Hank. And the knife? I took it to cut the ropes. my brother. He came at me with a knife. La verdad? Si. I didn't want to hurt him. Chop out some soup. This Hank is a thief and a murderer. Try anything he can to get away. He's tried using your brother, and he'll try to use you. He's convinced he can make people do what he wants. He's kind of half got me believing it. Enough? Maybe you better take it slow. There's plenty more on the stove. If you get hungry, you just let me know, all right? Pedro, you want some soup? No. I want you to stay in here. I don't want to see you in the kitchen. I'm going to go outside and put some more wood on that fire. He'll bring his friend. Yeah, that's what Hank keeps saying. I have to have help. I'm just going to have to hope he's lying. Why don't you be sensible? There's no need for you to get yourself killed just because you told the sheriff you'd help. Let me go. Your troubles will be over. I'll ride out of here and never see me again. You better let me go. Because I'm going to get out of here one way or the other. And when I'm out of here, you... Don't! You'll know it when I'm out of here. You'll know it! You stubborn bigot!
Nancy. Yes, there's a man in here with a gun on me. He's going to the bedroom, Nancy. I'm by the front door. I'm tied by the front door. Joe, why don't you walk out there in the fire and see if it's your friends or mine? Go ahead, Cartwright. Walk out there. He's still in the bedroom, Yancey. Still in the bedroom. Go on, Joe. You should have taken the deal, shouldn't you? You should have listened to me. You should have taken the deal. He's still in the bedroom, Yancey. Your brother's outside. He cut Hank loose. Now, you go get your horse. I can keep him pinned down till you get saddled up. I ain't ready to leave here just yet. I got him right where I want him. Take all the horses. Then let him try it. I can't leave my sister in there. That's right. You can't leave your sister in there with him. Pedro? You do what I tell you. Both of you can ride out of here with us, right, Yancey? That's right, boy. Uh-huh. Like that. Now, go over and stand by the fire where we can see you. No. Well, he ain't gonna hurt you. You're the last person in the world he wants to hurt. Go on. Get <laughs> You want to help your sister, don't you? Go on. All right. Come on out and see what I got for you. See what all your clean living righteousness got for you, Joe. Should have shot me when you had the chance. But you couldn't do it, could you? You couldn't kill a man in cold blood. That's why I got it over you. You got principles, but I ain't. I can do anything I want to. Did you get the idea, Joe? Throw your gun out! I mean, now! What does he do to Pedro? He's not going to hurt you, brother. I'm losing patience, Joe. You throw that gun out and you come out after it. Now throw it out! <laughs> oh, get him up. I got lots of plans for you, Joe. I'm going to give you a nice, cool drink at the end of that well rope. What about the boy and the woman?
You got three enemies now. I you the extra horse. I figured you might be able to use it. Gracias. Pedro? Take care of your sister now, you? Adios. 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 a pair as you could ask. The kind of a gift a man of property might give to his uh, wife. Well, let me hear a bit. I want to open up a bit. Or let me have a bit of $80 bid. $80. $80 bid of I. $80 bitty bitty buy. Who give a $100 bill? $100 bill of I. $100 bill. Let me hear a $150 bid. $150 bid of I. $150 bid. Let me hear a $150 bid. That stud horse is handsome. With him and a few good brute mares, and it wouldn't take no time we'd have the best land of livestock in the whole territory. Well, you don't have to sell me. It's your project. But I'd be careful if I was you. The auctioneer sees that look in your eye, and you got a shit on the crowd here on the price of that stud up over a thousand. Hey, Haas, if you run short, I have that $27 I saved. I may take you up on that, little buddy. Second time around, at a 125 Third sold at $125. And now, gentlemen, the real high point of this or any other sale. Bring him in, Jose. Gentlemen, I give you Prince Omar. He's coming up now. Now, I'm not going to insult you gentlemen's intelligence by entertaining too low an opening bid. I want to start the bidding at $500. I want to hear a $500 bid. Let me hear a $500 bid. This is Prince Omar, pure gold in horse flesh. Let me hear a $400 bid. Who bid a $400? Come, come, gentlemen. Surely no urging is needed to commence the bidding on this magnificent animal. His splendid configuration, his impeccable bloodline speak for themselves. Now, do I hear a bid of $400? Let me hear a $400 bid. 300. 400. $400 bid of my 400. Who'll make a $500 bid? Who'll bid five? 500. $500 bill I have. 500. 550. 550 bill. 575. 575. 575. Do I hear a six? Who'll bid a six? Let me hear a six. 600. $600 I have. $600 I have. Going at $600. Are you done, gentlemen? Haas, he'll be gone. Going at $600? $627. Does that bid stand, mister? It stands. He's my agent. $750. $750 I have. Who'll make it eight? Going at $750? Going once at $750? What do you think, Paul? What is it? Fine animal, but it's your decision. Going Go ahead, white go at seven hundred fifty dollars. All through. Eight hundred. Eight hundred dollar bid of my eight hundred dollars. Going at eight hundred. Do I hear eight hundred fifty dollars? Are you all through? Going once at eight hundred dollars.
going at 800 twice. Last call. Sold for $800. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, where there ever been any of it. Cassie's name, so you'll have to sign a bill of sale. That agent doesn't know that I'm involved. I'm well aware of that. Well, with his commission out, there'll be well over 700 left. But aren't you going to need any of that for yourself? Oh, I'll, I'll get by. Where can I contact you? No need, Kevin. You made a promise to me last night. I'm holding you to it. Is there nothing I can do to change your mind? Yes, there is, but you won't do it. You can't change what you are. And we can't change you. So let's just leave it at that, all right? I know I've made promises in the past, but can you not understand that I'm caught in the middle? I, with what comes easy, the con, the blarney, the, and what I really want, you and Cassie. But this time it could be different. If... Kevin, it isn't easy. I know that. If only you could have have worked as hard at something real. Oh, Kevin, what's the use? Do you believe I love you? Oh, dear heart. It hasn't all been bad, has it? No. No, there have been some wonderful times. Cassie, would you please wait downstairs for your mother and me? We need to talk alone. Oh, no. No, not again. I can't let you do this to me again. Cassie, Cassie, we're leaving now. Cassie, my love. Now, I'll give you my word right now. I'll find us that horse ranch that we've all dreamed about for so long. It'll be a place of our very own. Well, now, what do you say to that, Cassandra mine? It, it'll be just like a fairy tale come true. And we'll live there happily ever after. Huh? When I was five, I believed every word you said. When I was ten, I wanted to believe some of the things you said. But now I, I can't even do that. Papa, don't lie to us. And don't make us lie for you anymore. Just let us go. Please, we'll get along. Just let us go. It shouldn't be much longer now, ma'am. If we'd known you wanted a bank draft instead of cash, I'd have had the money ready for you. Oh, just so we don't miss the stage to Laramie. me. Oh. Well, you have a while. Could I go say goodbye to him? Oh, darling, it might make it harder. Hello, Prince Omar. Hello. Take, take it easy, boy. Take it easy. No, don't, don't, no! You spooked him. There's two things he hates, dogs and boys. Well, thanks, but you can't go in there. He's spooked wild. Just leave him to me. Easy. Yeah. What happened to him? Oh, he just gets like that sometimes. He'll be all right now. You weren't even afraid of him. Even when he was playing local, you weren't afraid of him at all. Afraid? How can you be afraid of something that you love? Your bank draft and your cash. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Cartwright. You're welcome. I hope you think it's a fair price. Well, it's uh, what my husband felt it should bring. I'm sorry your husband isn't in town. 
If he has any more stock like that Prince Omar, I should like to talk to him about acquiring some. Well, I'm, I'm sure he'd be very interested. It's unfortunate that he's uh, out scouting for a new ranch right now. Sure, fine looking at him. Uh, he's sort of her horse. I, I mean, she knows him. Hey. Mr. Cartwright, this is my daughter, Cassandra. Hello. Cassandra? Hello. Well, I guess we're ready to go. Cassie, Mr. Cartwright's been so kind as to offer us a ride as far as Virginia City. Hey, that's great. Thank you. I'll, I'll take the horse from you, sweetheart. Please be good to him. I'll, uh, I'll do my best, sweetheart. Go on. All right. Spunk for an old, tired horse. What do you mean, old, tired? Yeah, what is he, what, 14, 15? Joseph, take another look at that animal. Yeah, he, he's got to be a little older than that. Yeah. We must have got a good buy on him. What, you pay $100? I paid $800 for him. <laughs> $800? you got to be kidding me. Were you drunk? Joseph. Stop kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding you. Relax. Oh, it's a beautiful horse. Like, I'm not saying he's as good a horse as Coach. He's, he's a good-looking horse. You wouldn't be trying to con me into a race, would you, little brother? I might be thinking in those terms, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Be like stealing money. That horse will outrun Cochise or anything else in the territory. I wouldn't make all those wild statements till you put a saddle on him. Well, we'll get around to that. Thank you, Clint. I'll probably put a saddle on him tomorrow. Yeah, who are you gonna have sitting in that saddle? Me, of course. I'll find out how fast he is. <laughs> That's cruelty to animals. <laughs> You're gonna have a hard time selling a bent horse. <laughs> Uh, just how large a spread were you looking for? Well, it depends. What is important is plenty of grazing land for horses. How many head? Well, I'd be starting off small. Well, there's some possibilities. I, uh, I didn't get your name. <laughs> you don't have to worry, Mr. Kendall. You'll get your percentage. The name is O'Casey. If you'd like, I'll sign a piece of paper stating that you told me about those places. Well, there's a place off north, not too far from town. What about uh, the Cartwright Ranch? The Ponderosa? You're talking about one of the biggest spreads in Nevada. <laughs> Just heard the name. Heard it was good fertile land. Maybe they'd sell a piece of it. Ben Cartwright, a piece of the Ponderosa? <laughs> no, you'd find it easier to try and buy a part of the Silver Queen. <laughs> but there are a couple of places out near there. Good ones, too. Yeah. The Larson Ranch borders on the Ponderosa, and the Croninger's just out west a little bit. Look, if you can wait till tomorrow, I'll show them to you. Well, I am in a bit of a hurry. Tell you what, if you just give me directions on uh, on these places and some of the others, I'll I'll let you know. All right. Oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh, 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 oh. easy, Prince. Oh. Easy. Oh. Teach me that whistle whistle. Horse is gonna wear itself plumb out. Maybe Hop Singh's got some carrots in there to do the same trick. In the meantime, you keep teaching him his manners. I'll be back in a minute. 
You sure love him something fierce, don't you? He's a good horse, all right. Maybe it doesn't pay to love anything too much, though. Why is that? Someday you could lose him. Yeah, yeah I, I guess you're right. But anyway, you'll be able to stay here with him for a couple more days. Oh, yes. I'm glad Mr. Cartwright invited us to stay overnight for your birthday. Yeah, so am I. Maybe I can even get to know Prince better. Joseph saw some stray horses beyond the South Ravine. Now, do you think you could pick them up? Oh, sure, I'll bring them in. Sure. Uh, uh, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, sir. Um, do you think I could take the rig? The rig? The, with the pickup strays? <laughs> well, sure, why not? I, I could trail my horse. I see. You, uh, you weren't intending to go by yourself. Well, somebody ought to show her the ranch. That sounds very logical. Joseph, don't you think that sounds logical? Very logical. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I was going to ask her to, to actually ride with me, but, but she, she, you know, she looks so, you know... Um, fragile? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those uh, fragile, delicate ones, Jamie, they're the ones that fool you the most. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, we ask her. Well, I'd, I'd like to, Jamie, but I just haven't time to go myself. I, 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 I didn't mean that. I, I meant uh, we ask her for me. Uh, Jamie, you know there comes a time when a fella has to ask a girl for himself. And I think that time has come. It's all right, Mom? Mm, yes, yes, I would think so. <laughs> uh, do you have a safe horse for her, Jamie? Gentle mare, perhaps? Something more suitable for a young girl? Oh, sure, she can have Francie. She's a sorrel mare. Rides just like a rocking chair. <laughs> Thank you. All right, well, I'll get her settled up. Thank you, Mr. Casey. Right. I'll see you later, Cassie. Why? Cassie, word travels fast. A girl your age who rides too well. I suppose someone should hear about it. Are we always going to have to live like that? Afraid that, that someone's going to find out? No, darling. It's just now we've got to be more careful. Darling, we're going to have a whole new life together, you and me. In time, the, the past and everything we've been through will be forgotten. It's not easy to forget, is it, Mom? No, it isn't. sign of the strays over there. Hey, I hope you're not getting too tired. I, I forgot we come so far. That's all right. How's the mare? You said it. Rides like a rocking chair. Well, Francie can really open up when she wants to, but she's a lady. She knows when she has to behave. I'm so glad. Uh, do you want to rest? You do. All right. Um, can I help you down? Thank you. Strong. Oh, shucks. You, you know, way more than a sack of potatoes. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. And I mean thanks. Oh, is that beautiful? 
beautiful out here? It sure is. All the mountains and the canyons. Jamie, do you ever want to be a bird? No, I can't say that I have. <laughs> I have. Just think of it. Flying up there alone and peaceful. Nobody around. Just me in the sky. I think I'll try it. It's a long tumble down. Wouldn't you come get me? Oh, I don't know if it'd be worth it or not. Why not? Why? Well, you'd be all messed up. Folks would probably skin me alive when I get you back home. <laughs> Your pa never really did anything to hurt you, would he? Do you mean Mr. Carwright? No, no, he would. He's... I mean, my own pa died nearly two years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, you needn't be. You see, I was alone, and, and Mr. Cartwright and Haas and Joe came along, and I, I guess they figured I was astray, and they took me in. You know, now it's kind of funny. Well, what is? I don't feel like a stray anymore. I hope my pa would understand. I think he would. But you know what? Sometimes I find myself calling Mr. Cartwright Pa now. Do you think that's wrong, Cassie? Oh, no, no. Jamie, you're so lucky. You know where you belong. Yeah, that's it. I really do. One of the strays. I'm gonna go get him. I'll go with you. You can't, Cassie. Why not? Well, because you're a girl. Well, what does that have to do with it? Well, girls are kind of, you know, fragile. Well, that's silly. Well, no, it isn't. Uh, this is a man's job. you got to know how to ride and handle a horse. Yeah, but Jamie, I... Now you stay here where it's safe, and I'll be back with that straight quicker than you can pick a posy. Yeah. Why don't we see what kind of a rocking horse you really are? How you can ride. Jamie, you can't tell. Please, not anyone. Why not? If you can ride like that. Jamie, you've got to promise me. Promise me you won't tell. But why? My my mother made me promise I'd ride carefully. I mean, I'd never... Jamie, swear to me I'll be in terrible trouble. All right, Cassie. You swear it? Not your pa? Not anyone? I swear it.
Howdy. Howdy. Can I help you? You sure can. I'm looking for the Larson Ranch. I must have missed it somewhere back here in the turn. Yeah, well, that's easy to do. We can get you straightened out in no time. Name's Cartwright. Ah, Kevin O'Casey. Sure have a beautiful spread here, Mr. Cartwright. I confess I've dreamed of owning one just like it someday. <laughs> At the moment, I'll have to settle for a good deal less. Well, you don't need a spread the size of the Ponderosa to breed horses, Mr. O'Casey. How did you know what business I was in, Mr. Cartwright? Well, I met your wife and daughter in Carson City. Oh, did you now? Yes. Well, you must know how blessed a man I am. Yeah, indeed, I do. You must also understand how anxious I am to find the ranch that I need. The sooner I do that, the sooner I can rejoin my family back in Laramie. Mr. Casey, would you uh, come into the house for a moment? Sure. I think I might have a surprise for you. Oh. You've lied to us again, Kevin. But this time, it won't work. I swear to you, I did not know you were here. How could I? Not again, Kevin. Not again and not here. Even if I have to tell them. You are not going to do it here. Now, you haven't answered my question. How could I have known you were here? Prince Omar, you could have asked who bought them and where they could be found. You're right. I am lying. I did follow you, but not for the reasons you think. Oh, it's true, Naomi. You've got to believe me. All right, I've lied in the past, but never about this. I've never lied about my love for you. Well, look. These are all the places that I've looked at be between here and Carson City. And here's the Larson Ranch. It's somewhere close by. Oh, I tell you, Norm, it's just perfect for the three of us. Cassie, you've heard me promise in the past that there could be an end to everything that's been. And there can be. Don't you see, without the two of you, there's nothing for me. All right. I'll just be going on. Kevin. Kevin, what is the truth? What is the real truth about everything you've been saying? That there's a man who loves you and that blessed child you gave him. And not for a moment have I ever been worthy of you. But finally, I've made my mind up to try, mind you, to try and change all of that. Oh, Kevin, if you only knew how much I want to believe that. Norma, you can. You can. I don't believe you, Papa. I don't know why you came here, but it's not why you said. Oh, it is, it is. All I know is you're going to hurt us again, Papa. And I'm not going to let you do it. I don't care what I have to do. I'm not going to let you hurt us. Say goodbye. Oh, I know. I don't like it any more than you do. But I thought and thought, and there's just nothing I can do. Oh, Prince, you belong here now. I mean, like Jamie does. I just don't belong anywhere. That's why I gotta go. You know, 
I know mom's going to go with papa. No matter what she says, I know she's going to go. And I, mean, I don't know what. I, I guess she can't help it, but I don't have to. I, well, if I do, I, I mean, it'll just all happen over again. I, Oh, Papa will keep at me and smile, and maybe he can't help it either, but he will, Prince, I know he will. I just can't stand it. I just can't stand it. Oh, oh Prince. Oh. You to be up, in it? Don't blame me much, so I came out to say good night to the prince myself. Brought him some carrots. You wanna feed him one? Here. Hey. What's the matter? What's going on? Are you afraid I'm gonna mistreat your prince Omar? Is somebody mistreating you? Oh, well, you've all been wonderful. Mr. Haas, don't raise Prince Omar against my father's horse. Honey, I ain't got no intentions to. Yeah, but you will. Papa will talk you into it some way. He always does. And then you'll lose the prince. Well, that ain't likely. But that's why Papa's here. He... He cheats people. Cassie, that's... That's a pretty tough thing for a little girl like you to be saying about her daddy. I wasn't too little to race his horse for him. Three times I rode captain against the prince, and three times I beat him and won him back. Well, I had to. To get the prince back. I love him. But I wouldn't do anything to hurt any of you. Please, you've got to believe me. <laughs> Her heart was just breaking. How's she feeling now? I don't know. All I'm for sure of is if she comes in the room with yeah, You're sure she's telling you the truth, huh? Joseph, if you could have seen that little face, you wouldn't have to ask that question. It's my coffee? Yeah. So Casey's got quite a thing going for him, huh? Sells Prince at auction. He races Captain against him, wins, ends up with the same two horses all over again. If we get the auction money. Yeah. She says that he fakes a crippled knee or something. Then he bets the other fellow that even a kid can win on the Captain. <laughs> Take any grown man, put him on Prince Omar. Put Cassie, he weighs about... 85 pounds soaking wet on Captain. Prince Omar's got to be the first one to tire after any appreciable distance. Yeah, every little girl should have a father like that. Well, one thing, he hasn't asked you to race yet. Not yet, but she says he will. Are you sure that's the lowest price you can make it, Mr. Larson? That's it. Rock bottom. I see. Fifteen hundred, you say? I don't suppose you might consider... A, we'll say seven hundred. Nope. Well, I may want to bring my wife over if, if that would be all right with you. That's fine. Any time. Fine. Thanks very much. See you, Jed. <sighs> Old Jed's sort of hard-headed, but that's a dang good price. Oh, it is that. It's exactly what I've been looking for. Well, I wouldn't hesitate. I'd jump on it. Yeah, of course, but... 
a case like this, I like my family in on any decisions. After all, it is going to be our home for all of us. Well, yeah, it's the way it should be. Kevin, you gave us your word. I also promised your ranch. We need 1,500, we've only got seven. Then find another, one we can afford. I've looked everywhere. I tell you, there's none other like it to be had. Oh, it's blue water, green grazing land, a beautiful white house with a picket fence, a brand new barn to be a lovely home for the three of us. I tell you, it's, it's a dream come to pass. Another one of those beautiful dreams that never come true. Cassie was right about you. You planned this from the start. I never did. I tell you, it wasn't until I saw the Larson Ranch that I realized it was the only way to give you and Cassie what you should have. Oh, Cassie, I tell you, this time it's different. No. It's for our future, for our home. It's for us. Oh, no, it isn't. It's just for you. You just love winning and cheating people more than you do Mama and me. All right. You talk to her. You know what's at stake. She said everything I have to say. So be it. I can still do it on my own. This is um, T. Jamie from Doc Martin. <laughs> Oh, wow, it's great. Just what I wanted. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> You're welcome, Jamie. <laughs> well, here's the big one. The one I've been waiting to open. <laughs> it, it says, to Jamie, from it. It just has a question mark. It doesn't say who it's from. Well, open it. All right. from behind me. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's great. The only thing you're getting from me, Jamie, is a promise. The first coat that Omar sires is yours. Hush, you mean it? Absolutely. Cassie, did you hear that? Thank you very much. Congratulations, Jamie. A coat from Prince Omar. He couldn't do better than that. When are we going to see this prize of yours, Hoss? Hey, Doc, I thought nobody would ever ask. Come on. <laughs> Very much, Cassie. It's really the best present of all. You're welcome. Um, I have something for you. For me? On your birthday? Yeah. I, I wanted you to have it. I made it myself. Cassie? Gosh, what do I do now? Yeah, here he is. He's a real winner, Hoss. What did he cost you? Or aren't you telling? Oh, no big secret. Eight hundred dollars. And worth every cent of it. Yeah, well, twenty-seven of that belongs to Jamie, and he hadn't paid me yet either. Well, don't worry, I will. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a toast. Of course, we all know it's young Jamie's day, and justly so. But it's also our good friend Hoss Cartwright. For he's one lucky man. A toast to his health. And the best of luck with his new stallion, who is the handsomest and most distinguished and second fastest horse in Nevada. Second fastest? I'm afraid that's true, horse. You see, the stallion that I ride, Captain, oh, he, he's much faster than uh, Prince Omar. That's ridiculous. Of course, if you'd be willing to... Oh, I, I couldn't do that. I mean, you're too good a friend. I couldn't take such advantage. What advantage? I mean, what were you about to propose? Oh, I just want you to just forget about it. No, wait a minute, Paul. I want to pursue this. What were you about to suggest, Mr. O'Casey? Well, I was going to propose a match race for, say, two miles. Now, if the Prince Omar takes the captain, well, then my horse is yours. 
But if the captain takes the prince, well... Then Omar is yours. That's right. I see. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. O'Casey. You got yourself a bat right here and now. You know what you're doing? You're giving away over a hundred pounds. I know exactly what I'm doing. Well, you're ready, horse. Where's the starting line? Oh, my. You seem terribly impatient for a man that's about to lose his horse. <laughs> uh, oh, that burn it. What is it? Oh. I pulled my knee. I pulled a tendon loose or something down there. I don't know what. You're not saying you don't intend to go through with this race, are you? Oh, no. No, no, no. I ain't saying that at all. Well, what are you saying, then? The fact is that this race is just to see which horse is the fastest, ain't it? That's I mean, right. That being the case, then it don't make no difference who's up, does it? Uh, I think I'll use substitute. Here, young lady, come here. Ah, there you go. Ah. My rider is up, Mr. O'Casey. The race will start around behind the bar. right there up around the canyon that comes back in about a quarter of a mile down here. You'll finish up right back here at the barn. That's fine. All right. I'm gonna beat you, Papa. I'm ready. Ready. All right, little Joe. Anytime you're ready, let her rip.
Jazzy, baby. Oh, you're right. Oh, dear God, what have I done? You came back. You could have won if you came back. Oh, darling. Oh, my love. What's that dang doctor gonna tell us what's the matter, anyhow? Wasn't your fault, son. It was an accident. Now it's because of me it happened. I'm the only one responsible for it. What difference does it make who was responsible? As long as Cassie. Well, uh, I'll get some coffee. Mr. and Mrs. O'Casey. Can you come up here a minute, please? There's a lot of forgiveness I have to earn. Oh, how's the patient? I'm fine. Really, I am. Good. This time I am leaving, Chris. Not far. You behave now. I'll come back and see you. That's all right, isn't it? You bet you any time. Come on, darling. Still only sack potatoes. <laughs> Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Cartwright. No need. Just as long as that little girl has a happy home. Oh, that she will. Uh, Cassie, if you'd like a ride to school, I, I mean, it's on my way. Uh -huh. Well, I... <laughs> Anytime you say. I'll see you on Monday. All right. Bye. Bye, Bye, -bye Mr. Cartwright. Thanks very much. Now, what's this about Monday morning? Oh, Mr. Carlyle. <laughs> <laughs> 